Yo, bro, what's good, bro? Have you heard the news? What news? Oh, so you have it? Come on, what's the news? Oh, oh, that Clue Box now has 17 K poppers to choose your very own K popper box from. What? Wait, what's a K popper box? Well, if you must ask, it's a K pop box full of mystery K pop merch based on the group of your choice, delivered straight to your front door. You're telling me I can now support and embrace my K pop biases and K daddies straight from my home? Especially K pop dads. Ooh, -hoo. now you got me hooked. There can't be more that Clue Box does to this up, right? Since you asked, Clue Box keeps you in for a surprise. You can get items ranging from photo cards, keychains, stationery, accessories, bottles of apparel, skincare, ramen. Okay, stop, stop. You said enough. I'm getting me a K-pop or Clue Box as well as one of my friends right now. Am I one of those friends? Oh, you tell me you got 5% discount code, baby. Ooh, I see you. Guys, use NSD5 off 5% off your order. Now, on to the tasty video. Okay. What's up, lobies? Welcome back to another not so daily video. What's up, guys? Yo, I am wearing something a little different today. Oh. We're gonna get to the video, but I'm just, I'm just real excited. It just came today. Legitimately woke up to like your package is here. Fucking jealous. Cause we have two types, guys. We got two sweaters going on and not so daily right now. Bro, what are the two lines we got going on? We got NSD blue with this one, which is it's gonna change. I, I, let, let us know down below. Where we could, I, honestly, I'm, uh, David seems to really like it. <laughs> I find it really interesting how. <laughs> you know what? I enjoy the names. Let us know if you would like to change the name. And it's the blue, and then David's gonna get NSD blue. Um, but blue? look at this one. It's the blue. Uh, hold up, I'm a little shy. Bro, sell the product. Sell the product. That's right. Am I on camera? Guys, look at that. Look at that back. It is so beautiful. The details, the nice little ass crack right in the middle. I'm kidding. Guys, it is such a beautiful sweater. I love it. It's been a whole minute since we came out with another sweater. You guys, you guys already bought the previous ones. Thank you so freaking much. But this one, bro. It's, it's just so sexy front and back. Oh my god. These Hopefully are looking at yourself one. Sick. Yes. Oh, by the way, if you guys, if there are kind of like two sizes, they're not like uh, oversized or anything. So if you want an oversized, yes. go like one or two maybe. I still gotta, because this is a medium on me and it feels like it's pretty like just fitting. And then, I, but but I like a, like more of a relaxed. It says it's relaxed, but I don't know if it's Kevin relaxed. ain't feeling more it's relaxed, so I don't know. Um, I can't judge it. But I might go mine. one size over, so I'm gonna get a large. So we'll it is go. true to size so from what we're seeing. <laughs> the printing is really nice. Yeah. Guys, make sure you go get yourself one as well. We'll put the link in the description below. Thank you if you do. Beautiful freaking sweater, the blue and the blue. Either way, on to today's video, broski. What are we checking out today, and who do we owe the thanks to? Thank you to Elizabeth Sarah Bayo for suggesting this. She says, I just think you guys should watch this during your journey into BL uh, world. Uh, it went into the BL world. Uh, I watched over 200 BLs. Here's what I learned. Who's, right. the, who's the person I made this though? Let me see. Shout out to them. Can Shout out to Tally's the introvert. Ah, Tally's the introvert. Tally's. Tally's. Yeah, go subscribe, go support. Um, well, we'll see if it's like a good one. I don't know. No, I was kidding. We'll be I'm the judge of Elizabeth. This. <laughs> if Elizabeth suggests it is a good video, so thank you for Elizabeth for uh, supporting us on the Ruby tier and then also suggesting. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. let's go. Also, let's by the way, go. the Ruby tier is gonna uh, is gonna get the post to to suggest things uh -huh. tomorrow. Uh -huh. So guys, stay tuned. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or no, Pacific Standard Time. So 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Mountains time i'm not sure and if you, so guys, if you guys are on youtube and like what Come the heck is kevin talking about guys we have a whole tier called the ruby tier we get so many videos actually all the videos all the animes all the movies everything the dramas the bls just so much and in addition you guys have the opportunity to recommend what we should be watching such as this video like today so head on over to patreon as well if you guys are a patron we freaking love you broski let's get it let's, let's go, go. It's a BL. Oh my god, I'm so glad you asked. I have no idea what it is. Hold on. Okay. Uh, I gotta, I gotta adjust myself because I, I changed the like, how I sit so that I could show off the sweater. Oh, nice, nice, okay. Broski. I'm coming closer. Hold so on. we're gonna <laughs> see what what this person learned. So yep. far, we've watched one, two, three, maybe three, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. We were, there was supposed to something was supposed to be learning around here, but we'll see what we're supposed to learn, dude. <laughs> I, th that was my first reaction. I was like, oh, I wonder what there is to learn apart from it's you know, a boy love. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's boys loving boys, you know. By the way, do you guys want us to watch? Do you remember that movie that came out? It's like Bro Love or something. It wasn't. 
Oh my god, yes. I wanted, wanted to, to watch, watch that with that. David. So oh my god. <laughs> I wanted to watch it. So maybe you should watch it for like the holidays or something. Oh, that'd time. be cute though. All right. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's go. Okay. All right, we're in the play. BL stands for boys love, which comes out of yaoi in Japan, a genre of content that arose in the 70s designed around gay male relationships. It started as a subgenre of shoujo manga. Hear squat Since finding from its Montula. origins in manga, it has spread to a wide range of forms, and you can now find it in anime, drama. Is it me or is, it, is her audio off sync? Oh, dude, I just was able to put my audio up, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'll tell okay. you right now. Let's go back a little bit. So what is a BL? Oh my god, I'm so glad you asked. BL stands for boys love, which comes is out of Yaoi in Japan, a genre of content that arose in the 70s designed around gay male relationships. Started as a subgenre of You know, I think it's, it's okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I wonder if it's recording okay. Oh, gosh. I don't want it to be off sync. So what is a BL? Oh my god, I'm so glad you asked. BLs, and you can now- f I'll just adjust it manually, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I remember it's happened once this other time, and then it was fine afterwards. I don't know. Okay. So I guess we'll see. Okay. Find it in anime, drama, novels, video games, I'm learning films, a lot. and pretty much anywhere on the internet you look. Oh, really? You now learned already? The term already? was a portmanteau yeah. of yamanashi, ochinashi, iminashi, which means no climax, no point, no meaning. Referring to the fact that most of the works in the beginning were amateur creators and fan works that focus less on plot and character development than they did on... Um, other stuff. It, oh. Are we talking about Ken Porsche? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Let's continue. Boys love as a term was adopted in the 90s as an umbrella term for MLM romance media marketed to women. When I say MLM, I do mean men loving men, not... Boys love was marketed towards women? Well, I just learned something new. I don't know why I thought we were marketed... To, to guys, I don't know. I don't know why. Multi-level marketing, both of which are usually marketed to women. And has since become the catch-all term men. they use across Asia for that entire genre of content. It you would think that would be the audience. <laughs> gay men would want to see no. boys love. It's from the more broad term the target media audience. or even gay mm. media, something I'll be getting to in a minute, in that it was originally not marketed to actual gay men. A lot oh. of the OG yaoi and BL content was made by straight women, for straight women, and generally revolved around fetishizing gay men for sexual gratification, and oh god, this video is getting demonetized, isn't it? I'm not even a big enough YouTuber to get monetized yet, and I'm gonna get demonetized. A lot of these stories involve <laughs> perfect bodied men drawn without flaws, <clears throat> androgynous feminine features, extremely explicit imagery, and defining each member of the pairing by their sexual position. Tops, or semis, are usually the active pursuer, and yukes are the bottom and usually being pursued, yukes. often unwillingly. Because because the oh. other main benchmark of yaoi, particularly early yaoi, is the incredibly prevalent culture. Non-con is seen as a sexy addition to the story the rather than a horrifying omen of real life. And you can't scroll more than two inches without seeing a manga or a manhwa that depicts half the sex scenes as violent or at the very least vaguely non-consensual. Unfortunately, oh. this is a trend that continued well into the genre's popularity and even now there are shows being made with scenes that uncritically portray incredibly toxic behaviour as romantic. But we will get to it. BL nowadays has evolved from its original label of gay fetishization by women for women and has now grown to encompass content made by gay men, as well as queer themes and people in general. And what used to be something that was seen as distinct from queer media, because it wasn't for us, see this incredibly irate post from just two years ago screaming about how BL is not queer and how dare anybody imply that it is, and has now become a genre within queer media itself, often oh. helmed by queer people. But I'm getting ahead of myself. It's so so let's break this down a bit. Oh boy. Oh! Oh my god! Just drowned. Is one of this Ken Porsche? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh okay, bye bye. Funny. Oh, we got oh. some ink. And, oh, yo. And yeah, there's a spoiler in here. I'm gonna be kind of upset. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. We're so close to finishing it. <laughs> It's them getting married. <laughs> what? Spoiled! By the way, guys, while we're in this intro, make sure you recommend here on YouTube what BLs you'd like us to check out. Because uh, we're actually going to be starting another one <laughs> over on Patreon. So once I dipped my toe in the K-Dark so it didn't take me to find the gay shit. Oh yeah, we're doing costume changes this episode. Strap in! South Korea's first Bro, are you strapped in? 
David's a bottom. <laughs> Kevin likes strap-ons. All right. Will be all dropped pretty much as I was getting into K dramas, so it really was like fate. Now there have I been queer content him. made in Korea before, albeit not in the mainstream, as queer culture is still very much. Okay, we know you're a bottom. You love it. There's exactly it. one openly out queer idol, Holland, and he came out in 2019. They have a ways to go, is what I'm saying. But BL has already pushed that forward in leaps and bounds in just the last two years alone. Their first little BL, Way Rise Linga, dropped in May of 2020, followed shortly by Mr. Heart and then Wish You. And then one by mm. one, as companies began to realize how lucrative it was, more and more BL dramas had been made, and South Korea mm. has gone from a country with queer content pushed to the side and allowed to thrive only in indie spaces like film festivals or online like Strongberry, to a genre they are actually willing to broadcast in just two years. Part of this can be attributed to companies like Strongberry, who have been making queer content that is received well online for years, and directors like Lee Song Hyil, who is credited as making South Korea's first real Korean gay feature and continuing oh, to wow. make queer content after. Wow. Part of it can be attributed to the massive market for BL manhwas online. No, I'm not going to talk about Killing Stalking. Just go watch this video by James Somerton. It basically covers everything I want to say about it. Part of this can also okay. be attributed to we the love first gay subplot in a K drama that wasn't just a subtle allusion to gay people existing, but an actual romance plot with characterization and impact. Love at Flaws was not a flaw of the show by any means, but the gay subplot easily the best thing about it. The spotlight on the show was only amplified when Cha and Ha, one of the actors, passed away under undisclosed mm. circumstances while it was being broadcast. The show did an incredible job of handling the fear men must feel being created That's by suspicious. Korea under a misogynistic, toxically male culture, and the fact <clears> that it's <throat> his last performance makes scenes like this. All the more poignant. I'm not putting it. No, but I don't know. I'm not going to be able to do it. Is it him? Love with Flaws came out at the end of 2019. So is, it, is she implying that it was a hate crime? That's what I'm taking away from okay. I just from didn't want to misread Are that. you taking away? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're both yeah, saying the same thing. Dropped. And it all just snowballed from there. That is freaking sad. I don't want to definitively sad. say I have seen every that's, single Korean BL. I mean, some of them right? are not yet. But honestly, I have seen every single Korean BL. I'm sure there are short films and indie movies I have missed somewhere in the past or hidden on the internet. But in terms of the more mainstream, internationally available content, I have seen all of them. And I will continue to see all of them until I shuffle off this mortal coil. I've already discussed before that Korean men are more likely to appear queer to Western audiences due to the fact that they're more physically comfortable around each other. And I've mentioned numerous times now that the reason I love K-dramas so much is that I love the romance of period dramas trying to make sexual tension without directly showing it on screen. Because I am gay and touch starved. Now imagine you're me oh. and you watch a gay K-drama for the first time. Yes, I did in fact lose my McFucking mind. This is my shit. This is liquid gold to me. This is everything I've ever wanted in media. It's got yearning, Aww. prolonged eye contact, brief touches, yearning, angst, repression, hand shots, yearning, well-written conflicts and emotional beats. Oh, and did I mention hand shots and yearning? And did you mention yearning? Yearning. 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 I think, I think she likes the yearning. Ever. But the fact that they exist at all is a miracle. Anything directed by Hwang Sol, the writer director of the I first she was, I like to say that she relates to it a lot. Mm -hmm. Everything she's directed has ended up as a favorite of mine and she's worshipped yearning. in the BL community almost as much as Back Off No Panache. <clears throat> we will get to it. I don't have time to individually go through all 30 plus BLs, so I will simply give you my top five recommendations. Okay. I'm already cheating by putting every single Huang de Sol project as number one, but this is my list and I can do uh, what I want. Write this so, down. in no write particular down. order. That is, that is really cool though, that she that, that she, she found the media that she could relate to a lot, because like, I guess she's saying as a queer person, you wouldn't, like, you wouldn't be able to express yourself because you wouldn't, you, you don't know how the other person actually feels. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Like for us in the dating world, like we could, we could shoot our shot and get rejected, and then that's the end of that, you know? But, like, she can't even do that. Or, like, they can't even do that, you know? Okay. They, they don't know how the other person was feeling. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That does suck. But I'm glad that she can... Because it's cool finding media that you can also relate to. So. Number one, Where Your Eyes Linger, To My Star, Blooming, To My Star 2, and probably Blooming 2 when it comes out, who knows? Did I read Blooming. that right? Blooming, Blooming was one of the top. That might honestly be the next one we're checking out, so y'all better make sure you stay tuned to this channel. Because Blooming was definitely Blooming. there. The others, I don't quite remember.
Yes. Listen, they're just great. Really human stories with flawed protagonists. Is Ken Porsche gonna be here though? And often quietly, although one half of the pairing is usually more boisterous than the other. To my star and its sequel are my personal faves because I am a deeply insecure, lonely introvert, and it speaks Aww. to me on a personal level. Number two, Color Rush. <clears throat> With a plot straight out of a fanfic, this show is everything to me. People called monos live only able to see in black and white until they meet what they call probes who allow them to oh, see in a world of no. colour as long as they're also visible to the mono. There's a darkness underneath it because in this world it's well known that sometimes monos go crazy and get obsessive, kidnapping their probes in order to have permanent access to colours and Yonu's main oh. angst of the series is not wanting to become one of those people. It's, it's like that cat meme. Fantastic. Huh? Don't watch season two though. It's a completely separate narrative <laughs> oh. to the first, and the oh. love interest isn't in it, and it's just overall not as good. Number three, Mr. Hart. That plot was freaking insane. Oh my, my god. My what? Oh my. Huh? Oh, right. <laughs> this show really surprised me when I first watched it. I thought it was good, but not as good as Where Your Eyes Linger. It was the second one to come out after all, so there wasn't a lot to compare it to at the time. And then I sort of moved on. But of all the dramas over the last couple of years, this is one I have returned to repeatedly. It's just incredibly sweet. An adorable labradoodle of a guy falls in love with a stoic runner and learns to run so he can be his timer for races. Part of what makes this one a keeper for me is the emphasis on their power imbalance and how they correct for it. It's just delightful. So sweet. Before, Don't you just love when someone does that to you? Like the Boys High School Council. No Shin Woo, my son, my angel light of my life! What? You didn't get wrong? What's wrong? That's not what I'm saying. No. 분명히 너는 미안할 때만 잘해주는데 너도 잘 눈치 없다 Actually, all the boys in this show are my sons and I will shout their praises from the rooftops. This is one of the few dramas I watched as it was airing, something I generally refrain from doing because it stresses me out too much. But mm. here, it was worth it. I am so attached to this little queer friend group, it made me feel very seen. And for all you neurodivergent queers out there, at least one member of this group will speak to you personally. I guarantee it. Number five, no. semantic error. Semantic no, error! No, I said I wasn't ranking these, but if I had to, semantic error would probably come in first. Maybe time oh. with To My Star. It's just oh, so good. Star? Talented, free-spirited artist who's oh, stopped from graduating university by student who oh. below him who doesn't credit him on a group project because he didn't participate, so he didn't get the credits to graduate. So he decides to annoy the guy into submission. The guy in question is not impressed. Same <laughs> Yo, I and yet, honestly for some reason, he's drawn to him anyway. It's just so good! Plus, in this house, yes. we love openly bi representation, and this show gave us not one, but two iconic bi characters, as well as everybody's favorite angry, repressed gay. That was a fun drama. So much fun. <laughs> Can't wait for Sam to get back from military service so we can get a season two as soon as possible. Mm. After consuming oh all the Pedro reveals that are available, Is that why? at the time was about three and strong. You know we're checking that out. I turned to the internet to find more options. And the first thing I found was Thai dramas, but I have a lot to say about those, so we're leaving them for last. But about the same time as I discovered Thai dramas, I also discovered I had heard of Yahoo before 2020, I just never showed any desire to get into it. It all seemed very over-sexualized to me, and I was really unfazed by and uninterested in consuming it. I'll take signs I should have realized I was ace way sooner for 500, Alex. But it wasn't until I came at it from a different direction that I realized it wasn't all manga porn. Don't get me wrong, there is a lot of that. But Japan is fascinating in terms of media because there seems to be this really distinct line between their sexualized media and their non-sexualized media. Oh. Some queer Japanese content I've seen has non-con nudity and graphic sex scenes. The rest of it Damn. is the cutest, most innocent shit I have ever seen. Oh. There is no in-between. I'm deadly serious. Really? In Western media, I no most of our content falls between that's the two what I, that's, my, that's my, that's my, that's my, that's my group. <laughs> so, wow. The J-drama BLs rarely step out of their very specific circles. I'd oh. say in the Venn diagram, the only only things in the middle slice are his and life love on the line, which both portray a vaguely domestic approach to sexuality and relationships. Everything else is either single closed mouth kisses at the climax of the story, or content so graphic I would never escape demonetization again if I were to show a clip of it. Even shows that deal with darker or- Like when I watched Narcos first, I was like, damn, <clears throat> this, 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 this is just sexy. You know mm, what, I mean? mm -hmm. what other show? What was like the show that I was like, oh wow, that is a sex scene here. Like it was just was like a show where there was just one sex scene or the show revolved no, around sex? No, it was like sex. my first sex scene in a show. Cause you know like before like when you're growing up, the shows don't have any sex scenes, you know? But then like you watch a show, you know, cause usually like in movies, you, 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 you like, you know the sex scenes. Like there's sex scenes. You but, like, know show, when the camera just pans down to the bottom of the bed. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 
I think it was this because I was watching Rome. It was like this HBO show, and there was like a whole sex scene. I was like, oh, I think I was a teenager. Dude, I don't know. I like I the up... Roman Empire, so like I like I like learn about it. So, <laughs> so then I watched Rome because it was about the Roman Empire. But then they showed everything that went on. I grew up as like. I don't want to say we're average Latino. A like good Christian boy. Latin, Latin, <laughs> Latin boy. That's, you know, that grew up watching novellas with his parents. So I was introduced to at least the concept of getting it. <laughs> but did you know what that was? I I think in, in some novellas, they, they put as much as they could. What was your first sex or like the first show Shit. that you saw with a sex scene? Like, or have you, like, do you not? Like if I, I saw like straight up penis? <laughs> or like what are we talking about here? <laughs> No, like they were just having sex. Like having or like, sex. Uh, usually, like it's like titties. I think that you see mostly. Normally, you see titties. Yeah, titties like and the guy's ass. ass. For some reason, yeah, exactly. that's that's yep. the super. That's I can't the recall, man. I don't really recall. No. Oh, you don't tend to watch any dramas or like those types of I shows. I don't. Though. Like, for me, I'm I'm 25 at the moment making this video. I I love just cartoons. <laughs> like I will always just love cartoons. Yeah. So therefore, like, if I did watch something, it's either because I was watching it, just because I was sitting in the living room with my parents, which made it so much worse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, I know it's different. It's different. Yeah, you, yeah. you do enjoy. Well, I wasn't dramas ready and for movies. it. I was just curious. Let us know what you guys when you guys first were introduced to. That's right. Like Sexual TV. Try or miniature coin laundry or old fashioned cupcake still leave the more central elements of their plot lines to the subtext, mm -hmm. and all three of them only really have one major kiss scene, usually right at the end before the story is wrapped up. I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all, I'm just saying it's something I've noticed. Something else I've noticed is the distinct vibe Japanese BLs and Japanese content in general gives off. There's something what about vibe? the way these shows are made, although I'm not exactly sure what, <clears throat> whether it's the music or the shot composition or the scripting or any number of little details about the way they incorporate the location that feels ever so slow slightly off. Again, not in a bad way, just in a way that makes them completely unique from everything else you watch. There's an existential aura to Japanese BL, <coughs> even in the cutesy fluffy ones. The only word I've been able to put to it is haunting. Japanese haunting? BLs are haunting, haunting. affectionate. And I love them. Top 5 haunting. Japanese BL recs in no haunting. particular order. Number 1. His. This is a film about a gay haunting. guy living in a small town whose high school boyfriend with his daughter comes back into his life. From the picture it seemed like one of them is like, doesn't, either doesn't want it or is just like, and then they go about it, it was like, well, you'll like it. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it feels like. That's, that's, that's what I picked up on. Like, on they're the convincing two. them. But, but the way that this person said it's like all Japanese BLs are like what this. What was the channel name? Talus, uh, the introvert. Yeah, so I'm kind of interested in watching one Japanese BL to see what, what, the, what, what you know, what this person is, is talking about by the haunting. Because... Mm -hmm. From Korean BLs to Thai BLs, there's definitely a difference. You could really tell, at least in the overall vibe. But Japanese, for them to be haunting, that, that's mm. kind of, that's intriguing and scary. It's a slow rumination on relationships and queerness and parenting and the love people deserve to give themselves. Number two, Utsukushikari and Old Fashioned Cupcake. Combining these two because I can. They both have the dynamic of one person secretly admiring the other and that's about the only similarity. Utsukushikari ah. is a commentary on obsession and putting people on a pedestal and Old Fashioned Cupcake is about two adults learning to enjoy carefree things again. <laughs> They're both great. Number three, Kiera Hatsukui and Mr. Unlucky has no choice but to kiss. Combining these two mainly for the chaotic vibes. Kiera Hatsukui is about a kid who ends up in a misunderstanding where the hot guy in class thinks he has a crush on him so offers to date him. Oh. What? Damn. He pulled what they've been meaning to pull, dude. And Mr. Unlucky is about a man whose life is plagued by terrible luck but whose life gets better when he's around the hot popular guy at uni who seems to have <laughs> infinite luck. <gasps> The main thing grouping these two together is the chaos. Anybody who watches manga or has seen a comedy J-drama knows exactly what I'm talking about here. Deranged characters doing ridiculous things for fun. And it is fun. Those Ooh, haiku four, count. The corded mouse dreams of cheese. This is from the other circle in the Venn diagram. So oh. approach with caution. A man is cheating on his wife and the PI she hires to tail him is one of his college friends who is gay and has fancied him for years. The PI promises not to tell his wife if he lets him kiss him. Oh. The plot unfolds from there. 
結婚してる身で付き合ったことが表面化したら結局奥さんを選ぶそんなのどんなお別れのやり方したって結局残酷だろ It's very good, but to my fellow ace girlies, please be warned, there is more than one pretty explicit scene. Not like Mood Indigo pornographer playback levels of explicit, but actually, no, yeah, like, it's about that. Number five, Cherry Magic. Cherry the one I know、magic. a massive chunk of you were already screaming at the screen from the moment I started talking about Japanese BL. Cherry Magic, or Cherry Magic, 30 years of virginity can make you a wizard? Basically, exactly what it says <laughs> what? on the gym. A man wakes up on his 30th birthday only to find that he can suddenly read the minds of anybody who is making skin to skin contact with him. This is a nightmare for him. He is a socially. David is on his way, guys. No. <laughs> Yo, five more years, baby, I'll be a wizard. <laughs> Four, because he's about to be 26. <laughs> I'm the m i s s t e e n I'm just video, saying, people don't forget to say happy birthday.、All、right. Don't, don't forget to say happy birthday to David on the 16th. I see it, bro. You, you, you I better, I mean, better get messages. I'm about to be a wizard. I better get some DMs. All right, let's get it. You're going to feel a spark. Also, the introvert who hates human contact. But one day, <sighs> pressed into the elevator, he overhears the thoughts of the coolest guy in the office thinking about the guy he likes and then very quickly realizes that it's him. He can read thoughts? He can. He's a wizard, Harry. <laughs> right, he's a wizard. You, you, you. The show is everything to me. It's soft, it's heartwarming, it has ace representation, it has a healthy respect for people who haven't had sex into their 30s, it puts a great deal of value on open communication and respect for boundaries. And it's one of the best BLs I've ever seen, period. Although, despite what the title and premise may suggest, you don't see any thirsty content at all in this drama. Not a lick. So, all you horny freaks will have to take your patronage elsewhere. Maybe somewhere like. Taiwan was the only country able to host a Pride in 2020 and is considered、oh. a beacon of LGBTQ liberation within Asia,、oh. holding the second largest Pride in the continent and creating some of the best produced mainstream queer content around. They have a pretty big queer cinema culture already, have done for years, and <coughs> half the short films and miniseries on queer streaming services like Gaga Hula La are Taiwanese. So when it comes to BL, they really hit the ground running, which is why I feel confident in saying that Taiwan has some of the best horny gay content out there. Japan might have the most explicit, but Taiwan. Taiwan's execution is simply the best. Oh, you go,、ah. Taiwan. There's a healthy approach to physical content and skinship that is rarer in the other countries' dramas, although they are catching up. Sex isn't just saved as like a post amble to the kiss or the climax of the series at the end, although that's often still the case. It's also discussed by characters. It happens before the end, it happens naturally. There are even times when one character realizes they're not ready and puts a stop to it. <laughs> We love consent. Let's get it. In terms of the BL scene, that shit's revolutionary. Because remember way back when I said this genre's roots are in fetishized non con scenes written by straight women for straight women? We remember. Every、yes. year, Taiwan looks that origin、oh. in the face and kicks it a little further away. Taiwanese BLs feel queer. There used to be a much clearer distinction between BL and gay cinema, which I think was to its detriment because it's、mm. like we're discounting a whole section of gay media because it wasn't made with gay people in mind. But countries like、mm. Taiwan blurring that line are making it a lot easier to put on. Under the queer umbrella and take back that gay content for ourselves, as well as normalize it for heterosexual people in a less gross, fetishizing way. We're liberating BLs, baby! And who better to do that? <laughs> baby! So, my top five Taiwanese BLs. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Number one. It really is. You know, like, do what makes you happy without having all these constraints that society has put on you. It is crazy、That's、to、awesome. me, though, that, that, that it started with a fetishizing. Like, right, just the、oh, whole、wow. beginnings of it? Yeah. And freaking saying, wow. Okay, okay, let's go. There we go. By the way, I gotta say, I love the changes of like scenery that we get. Very nice. Very nice. Your name engraved here in. Let's start Dave off with the house. Dave's gonna do one right now. It's gonna be in his living room. We're gonna go out throughout, throughout the whole house, you know? But <laughs> <laughs> this movie is brilliant. You can find it on Netflix, and I highly recommend you do because it's such a beautiful, heart wrenching love story of two boys who can't ever admit that they both have feelings for each other. Have you ever cried watching a sex scene before? You will.、No. Well, it's not technically BL as much as it is gay cinema. I'd like to think we have blurred the lines enough between the two in the last few years that we can make it count, or at least Taiwan 
everyone has. Number two, about youth. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have about you, you cried which in is the just the cutest, like watching the cutest a sex scene? come out of Taiwan. High school drama. I guess it was like really couples, beautiful. Good music. Or was it like really sad? Number three, history Dude, three. I'm assuming it's really sad. A cop who's a member of the Taiwanese mafia who he thinks is the culprit for a crime committed four years ago. But little does he know, said mafia boss is also trying to unearth the culprit for that crime. Hijinks and sexual tension ensue. I love my chaotic queer cop mafia pairing and their deranged antics and goofy side pairing and fun dramatic mystery plot. It's silly, it's serious, it's fluffy, it's dramatic. 10 out of 10 would recommend and have to anybody who will listen. Number four, we best love, number one for you. Rivals to love she a really fast. You may have guessed that I have a she thing for friends I to love You'd be right, but that's only because it's the superior dynamic. Not friends to love us, also good, or enemies to love us, perfectly fine, but enemies to friends to love us. The ultimate god tier. We best love is about rivals for the number one spot academically and how one of them is always second and drives David. him crazy until finally they go their separate ways after high school and he's finally number yeah, one. Yeah, he's first and second place. He's always fighting for that. <laughs> right up until his rival suddenly shows up at his university and starts showing him up again. It's oh. stupid, it's heartfelt, it's passionate, and I love my dorks with my whole heart. The sequel series isn't as good, but I still watched it through more than once just to see them because their chemistry is insane and it's so easy to get sucked in. And number five, the rest of the history series. Yes, I'm lumping things together again. No, there's nothing you can do about it. The histories are just unparalleled. Every year there were at least one, but usually two dramas under the banner of history, every <coughs> single one being its own story. History one, my hero, is a post-death body swap. Stay away from me is about someone falling for his new stepbrother and obsessed is about oh. an unhealthy obsessive relationship. None of them have any oh, wow. <laughs> Oh. All, and all of them are good in their own way. Although they really peak with traps. Step brother, what are you doing? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> wow. Wasn't there, there was a show where there was like, and it was like on Disney. My life with Derek. I've They're never like step it. siblings. I watched it. <laughs> and they're like yeah. step siblings, right? Yeah. And the parents marry each other. Yeah. And then there's this odd sexual tension with them. No, not sex, but like likeness, obviously. It was not really sexual. It's Disney, but... But it, it wasn't even a Disney show. It was like a Canadian show that they bought and then showed. But now you can't find it anywhere Disney related. Like, they just disowned that one. Because of the undertone. <laughs> really? Because they're stepbrothers. Or ste step-siblings. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. History 3, Make Our Days Count, is great if you want to cry yourself to- Like, I I'm not watching Gossip Girl directly. Because every time I wa my wife's watching Gossip Girl, I just happen to be like, sort of putting all my attention to the show. <laughs> and something like that, like that happens, but it was accidental. As, as I, it was like, first, like, the, 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 the two, like, like, people were dating, and then they found out their parents, through the parents that they were, like, steps in. Either way. It wasn't exactly like this, like, oh, hey, stepbrother, <laughs> you want to do something today, you know what I'm saying? Sleep after watching something. History 2, Crossing the Line, is an adorable sport drama. History 4 is problematic in some ways, but super fun as long as, and this goes for basically you anything. You grab his neck. You're aware of potential triggers before you watch it. Nope. They're well made, well acted, oh. and honestly, they feel as close to mainstream Warning. Western media as you're going to get in terms of their storytelling and cinematography. Like, if I turned on ITV and something like Make Our Days Count was on, I wouldn't question it. They're all great, but it's a mixed bag, so I suggest Googling the synopsis and just pick and mixing the ones you like. Next up! <laughs> oh, China! China doesn't China. make BLs because they're homophobic. We learned that. Vietnam's BL scene, Straight okay, the okay, there's more to it than that. Because of their homophobic haze code, they can't make explicitly gay content, so what China does is <clears throat> romances. But I have way too many thoughts about those. Romances. And this video is long enough already, so I have a whole other video in the works just about those. Watch oh, wow. this space. Oh, oh, that's Vietnam's cool. BL scene is propped up by one man and we must all bow before him. Wen Ba Vinh, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, has been in basically every Vietnamese BL drama that has been released since the first one in 2020, and we love to see it. They're pretty much Working all work dramas, so they're all available on YouTube or Gaga. And oh. while Vietnam's BL industry <laughs> is in infancy compared to other countries I've mentioned, they're still doing a wonderful job. They're a great addition to the oeuvre and I hope they keep it up. I'll do a top three for them because doing a top five feels too exclusionary when there aren't many more than that out there. Number one, Goodbye Mother. This was the first Vietnamese thing I watched, period, and it's a movie about a gay couple where one of them brings his boyfriend home to meet his family but doesn't tell them it's his boyfriend, oh. just that it's uh -huh. his roommate and the fallout from that. 
It's beautiful and I adore it. Number two, You Are My Boy, oh. one of the OG oh, Vietnamese forays into BL from early 2021. A little slow and awkward, but a delightful little drama with some pretty cute chemistry. Number three, Mr. Cinderella. Like a man has been Mr. daydreaming about Cinderella. his Cinderella, a girl he had a crush on when he was a kid, for years, only to meet him when he's an adult and find out it's actually a man. And not only that, but he's a hot doctor who saves him from harm. It's cheesy <sighs> and dramatic and great. Vietnam is just getting what started. A plot. I can't wait to add more <laughs> entries to this list. Here's to a long future making more. More also seems to be the general philosophy of the Philippines, whose dramas I can describe as everything from soap opera to musical, and whose unbridled nonsense is only paralleled by their commitment to kiss scenes. And boy are they committed. When I say these dramas are a lot, I mean they're a lot. It's not always my cup of tea, but honestly I still think it's great because the Philippines is notoriously not great in terms of their treatment of LGBTQ plus people oh, no. overall. So the fact that queer culture has not only managed to thrive despite these restrictions and discrimination, but also that they can create relatively popular shows based around queer characters and themes, that can only be a good thing. My top five That's Pinocchio impressive. are, number one, like in the movies. This is one of the more low-key realism-based dramas, which is part of why I like it, but it also has a kind of sad slash bittersweet slash ambiguous ending, which is not for everybody. Two guys end up living together, oh, one of whom is comfortable oh, with it, and the other I was about to say it. that I hate <laughs> ambiguous endings, my guy. Oh my god. Just sort of realize You know, so it uh, it's funny, because uh, my girl also hates those. When she says, because I think, I forgot what we were watching the other day. So, and then I, I was no like. no closure. I think yeah. it's a Saggy thing. They're both Saggy well, We're both Saggy's. Kevin's got a thing for Saggy's. Hello. Hey. Because I'm a Leo. Dude. We're fire, fire. Dude. <laughs> anyway, you were saying, you were saying that. I'm sorry, I cut you. No, that was it. <laughs> it was, I just found it funny. Dude, I mean, do you not get, like, a little bit frustrated when, like, an ending is not, okay, I hate you, die. It's quiet and soft and sweet and tired. It's not two, Game Boys. Another one of the more low-key ones and okay. definitely one of the highest. Well, like, it leaves it up this to interpretation. This one got a sequel series like, and movie cool. and is generally seen as the best Filipino BL out there. It was created and set during COVID with two guys falling in love over voice chat and video oh. calls while playing games together. It's fantastic. Oh. Kapag lalaki, bawal na gumamit ng babaeng hero. Hindi. Hindi ko na in-expect dyan sa itsura mo. Number three, My Day. Ramping it up in the chaos category, we have My Day. An up-and-coming chef named Sky joins a multi-believable Sky? company and wins the heart of his bitter boss, Ace. The and irony not is Kevin's not lost on me that this show has oh, numerous show. scenes, and yet one of their protagonists is called Ace. Respect. Number four, Rainbow Prince. This one is a musical. I repeat, a musical. this one is a musical. A musical. <laughs> I love musicals. <laughs> Kevin does love his musicals. Reality versus expectation. It's got this hysterical <laughs> balance between high enough. Oh my gosh, bro, that is so right up your alley, though. Budget for good costumes and locations, and a low enough budget that the sound quality, camera direction, acting, and dialogue is completely deranged. <laughs> Come for the fun musical numbers, deranged. stay for the campy acting choices. I love music. Oh, the outfit, I was working out with Jennifer and Bobby. Maybe we could work out sometime, you know? Uh, just you and me. Just, oh, you and me? Yeah, just you and me. Sure? <laughs> Sounds great. Oops. Are you okay, Chuk Chuk? Uh, anyway, I'll be heading back home. All right, you guys, take care, okay? Does it even have a script outside of the musical numbers? <laughs> Who's to say? 10 out of 10 would recommend. Not walk, Bet Sin and question. Sleep With Me. These are actually GLs, and they're both pretty good. GLs. One is a kind of breakup drama, and the other has some interesting commentary on disability and relationships, mm. and I recommend them oh, wow. both for different reasons, <clears throat> but really I just wanted to use them as an excuse to segue into a discussion about Another big factor in BL moving away from its origins and towards a more holistic approach under the queer umbrella is the emergence of GLs. Or, you guessed it, girls love dramas. They're still less common than BLs because they didn't always belong to their own genre, largely because being female and queer is slightly less stigmatized than being male and queer in most places. So you're more likely to see a queer-coded woman on TV than a man, or see two oh. women kissing than see two men kissing, outside of BL. <coughs> this is part of why BL has had a surge of popularity, especially since it has been helmed by more actual queer people. But even back in the day, queer men were starved for content that wasn't desexualized to the point of parody. Gay men on TV, even as little as two decades ago, were neutered, rendered sexless, in order to offend the least amount of people possible. While for women, the pendulum swung in the opposite direction. Our sexualities were overexploited to the point where you'd see two women kiss before you saw them pass the Bechdel test. I'm exaggerating. 
but only slightly. Well, the normalization of queer women in the Western known. media is very similar to the origins of Yari, but it largely wasn't made for women, me, but made no, no by way. straight men for their own gratification. And there are lots of arguments being made about the costs of Athlete. lesbianism being more normalized, but only under the scope of what <laughs> heterosexual men find hot, versus the queer content being made by actual queer people and showing them as whole people rather than sexy caricatures. I would love to be a sexy caricature. <laughs> Someone come over here and sexualize. Both sides have been negatively affected in different directions, and rather than divide the community, I'd much rather come together because Lord knows the right wing reactionary pieces of shit are going to do everything they can to tear us apart. They've already started. I say that like they haven't been doing that for the last like hundred years. But anyway, like support drag queens, support trans people. Don't be a dick. So with the popularity okay. of BLs rising in the queer community, it was only a matter of time before mainstream GLs started getting them too. Every country has done it, although some are slower on the uptake than others. And in terms of other sexualities representations, Japan has probably got ace rep in the bag, while Taiwan is waving the bi flag and jumping up and down. There has been some suggestion recently to change the name for it all to QL, as in queer love, and rebrand the genre under that label to distinguish it from yaoi and to not draw such a gendered line between Willowa and Mulama romances. Especially considering <coughs> that the titan of the BL Willa industry Willa has one of the <laughs> best track records for trans Willa representation Willa in the Willa world. Willa oh. Ah, Finally, we have reached Thailand. For those of you who skipped every other section to get here, I see you, I understand you, Damn. I respect you. We reached Thailand and there's like just a whole 30 minute section for this. It's about to get good. <laughs> or right. yeah, Strap in. This is going to be the longest part of the video. And yes, Yo. I am filming this on a different day to all the first half. I ran out of daylight. It's winter here. It gets dark at 3 p.m. And it's currently 2.30. So we are oh. chasing fucking daylight here, kids. <laughs> God, where do I even start? Thailand is basically the linchpin of BL's popularity. Japan might have originated it. Excuse me, we originated the language. <laughs> but Thailand really made it mainstream. Turned it into a profitable, brandable genre of television. Oh. Yaoi manga had a large following in Thailand for a while. And a number of web authors started penning their own BL series and novels, which picked up huge numbers of followers, and it wasn't long before Thai television companies started testing the waters. At first, they did what Korea did, albeit before them, adding them in as secondary subplots to gauge the reactions of the public. But once these subplots started to gain more popularity, it was inevitable that they would make a series spotlighting a gay romance. In 2014, Channel 9 Network released Lovesick, the series, which was hugely popular, and became the catalyst for more Thai channels to follow suit. By today's standards, Lovesick isn't the best in terms of modern representation, and it's more of a lacorn, like a Thai soap opera, than a full-fledged BL drama, the way we come to understand them today. A but we have to respect it for at least opening the door. A second season that was twice as long as the first was commissioned in 2015, which was just as popular. Trans characters had been in shows for a while, but BL as a genre really amplified their existence, and not just as the butt of the <clears> joke, <throat> but as actual full-fledged roles. Plus, they often just casually exist in shows, with their transness not even mentioned at all, which is equally nice. Both of those things are good. To have stories revolving around a trans character's transness is good, and to have a trans character just existing and have the transness not even addressed is also good. They're both great. <laughs> not to mention, household names like Jenny Pannon became even bigger as a result of her roles in things like Three Will Be Free, and also as an MC for interview shows involving BL casts. It wasn't just a niche interest anymore, it was a mainstream genre. Following this, a number of other companies jumped onto the BL train, with the subsidiary of the largest entertainment conglomerate in Thailand completely monopolizing the market. That's right, it's GMMTV, yeah. baby! There were a Woo! few other companies like Line TV also releasing shows like Make It Right around the same time, but with GMMTV's release of SOTUS, they basically instantly cornered the market. Nowadays, <laughs> SOTUS is divisive because of its plotline that hinges on college hazing, its introduction of the beloved phrase, I'm not gay, I just like insert name here, that's me with David. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> uh, bro, that's basically us. Like, I ain't gay, but for Kev, though. <laughs> He'll cross streams with me. Thank you. <laughs> That's facts. That's facts. If you guys know us, if you know, you know, right? As far as we're gonna go. Getting that other forms of queer this ain't a competition. and bisexuality exist. And the behind the scenes <laughs> nonsense of one of the cast members that I'm not going to get into here because I have more to say about that later. But it was insanely popular. It shot the two lead actors, Chris and Singto, to instant stardom and was given a second season later in 2017. Oh. It also solidified the running joke that all engineering students are gay, which continued into future BLs. <laughs> Wow! There is an engineer! I didn't know that! Because, you know, in the, the series, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, in I, I'm considered an engineer too, alright? <laughs> 
not gay, but <laughs> in Bad Buddy, it's engineers versus uh, architects. Now yeah. I know it's specifically engineers. What about what about oh. architects? Are they also considered? Oh. That is okay. funny. That is actually really funny. To constantly be set in the engineering, engineering department of the We'd love to see BLs. diversity in STEM and trades. I didn't know it was a thing. <laughs> wow. Both seasons won a ton of awards. And with shows like Puppy Love and Waterboy doing well in between the two seasons, we will talk about that. It basically confirmed to the company that if they kept making BLs, they would keep making money. In order to prove this theory, they spun off a gay side couple from Kiss the series and gave them their own show with a story of how they got together called Kiss Me Again. Tay and New, the actors in that, were also shot to mega stardom and GMM TV created a branded approach to their BLs. The couples weren't just actors, they were a couple. They were conjoined. They were a product not to be sold separately. This makes a lot of sense if you know anything about so how told, yeah. random works. Yes, that's exactly it. Like once there's like this like power couple, they will do multiple different BLs. Yeah. With that same couple. It's, and a, that it's is a pretty just interesting amazing. concept. Yes, it is. Because then a lot of the time, especially like here, they won't like you won't get casted as something else because you already like you, you you have a stigma when you get casted like you have a certain look like Tom Holland he plays like a similar role every time because he gets that mm. that's just what people want right mm. so it's mm. like people tend to avoid like if they want like a specific thing they'll avoid certain actors because they're like well they you don't really fit the part but for them it's like there is like we're gonna put you in different things we're gonna make it fit you know what I mean that's pretty yeah cool. yeah 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 but to the west it can be a little uncomfy. I've already talked about my thoughts on that in this video, uh, so I don't want to belabor it too much here, but treating real people like products is fucking weird, and getting angry when they act romantically alongside people who aren't from their original show is a weird as hell reaction to have. But you'll have to get used to it, because it's about to get a whole lot more prevalent. <laughs> Still in 2018, I better we have see Korn, aka Drake. Korn! Oh my god! Someone's saying it! Get out! Yo, I am, meant, I am meant to meet Drake one day. Like, I, dude, that was way too on point. <laughs> I'm gonna meet Drake one day, I swear. <laughs> And Our Sky, which is basically a selection of special episodes oh of the previous Korn. series GMM TV had aired. In 2019, we had He's Coming to Me, again starring Singto, legend that he is, hey. and also starring Om Pawat, who had made his name way back in 2017 as a teenager. That is in crazy, because it's like you get casted with, like, obviously your, your drama partner. And then it's like, you're supposed to be able to give it a different look and a different vibe. That's like crazy, dude. I don't know. It's so interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Right, then. But don't you see that a lot also in like Spanish dramas? Or like Latino dramas? Yes. You see like the same you actors. do. In and them over and over again. It's, it's believe it or not, I, I grew up watching novelas. So yes, you do. But you just fall in love with these characters as they are. Yeah. So, and like after you watch the first few episodes... You just forget about the previous whatever plot right? or like, cause it's just it just doesn't like, matter. Whoa. Yeah, and it's just so good. It's it feels like it's, familiar it's here in America that that's like a thing, or maybe the yeah. West, just in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like, but Latin America is this part of the West. But it's like different yeah. here. It's like you don't they, they don't want the two things to be compared or like to be like people like if they get this they don't want them to think of something else while watching this new thing, or like it's very uh, it's just I don't know, that's crazy. Culture. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. We had Theory of Love, the series that cemented Off Gun as one of GMM TV's most popular <coughs> couples, and Dark Blue Kiss, the sequel to Kiss Me Again that cemented Tainu as household names too. During this period of time, GMM TV's pillar couples were Chris Singto, Off Gun, and Tainu. And while they were the godfathers of BL, they did not stay lonely up there for long. In 2020, we had Together, the series which made Bright win a thing, Kind of the Shipper, uh, Still Together, the sequel series to Together, My Gear and Your Gown, Friend Zone 2, Dangerous Area, a special episode oh, of Theory of Love, oh. and Ton Hon. John Lattie. In 2021, we had Tale of a Thousand Stars, Fish Upon the Sky, Bad Buddy, and Not Me, which both aired Bad into 2022. Buddy. And that's when things really got crazy. Because this year, we had Enchanté, Cupid's Last Wish, Star in My Mind, and Sky Enchanté. in Your Heart, Vice Versa, Magic of Zero, The Eclipse, and My School President, Never Let Me Go, and Midnight Hotel have all started airing and won't finish until early next year. Not to mention The Warp Ooh, Effect, which I yeah. haven't started watching when I recorded this, and is in fact one of the queerest things I think GMM TV has ever made. Where's the lineup for next year has already been announced, and that's even more chuck full of BL drama. 
drama. Pretty much all of these shows are posted internationally available to the official GMMTV YouTube channel with English subtitles, so they are incredibly easy to watch, even if you live half the planet away, and you don't have to pay for a subscription service. GMMTV has well and truly leaned in, and that's fucking fantastic. And while it is fantastic, we need to address the elephant in the room, which is that some of these shows uh, were bad. I'm not just talking about GMMTV oh. here. There were a lot of other companies jumping on the bad, bad, bad. around the same time. But all this is to say that Ty BL, <laughs> like and especially early bad, Ty BL, really plays into some of the more negative yai stereotypes. And here's where I need to talk about Waterboy. Before I start, I adore Earth and New, and I'm Too so glad wise. they're both popular enough in their own respects that this show is barely a blip on their radars anymore. But oh my god, I thought I hated Earth <laughs> for a year after I watched this show. I almost what? didn't watch A Tale of Thousand Stars just because he was in it. Because his character oh, in this show, the main character, is so horrible. He's homophobic oh. while being secretly oh. queer himself, oh. and he takes a lot of his homophobic anger at himself and his dad out on his love interest, played oh. by New, who is consistently messed around by Earth's character so much much that by the end I was screaming at my screen for him to run. It plays up the cheating bisexual trope, it makes light of a gross power dynamic between a coach and a student by claiming that it's homophobic not to endorse it. We had a lesbian both portrayed as a predator and then had her lesbianism erased by the end. And the first kiss scene oh. between the main couple is literally a sexual assault. <laughs> That is straight up. Especially shows like this that make me understand crime. people like that person on Reddit earlier claiming that BL isn't queer. That went through a bunch of people to make it on air. How the hell did that go on air? How the hell did that? And with the there? music playing yeah, in the background, not like my god, music, like, this sexy can't have been music. made by queer people. What? the hell about queer people or for queer people which is crazy because the three directors on it are directors who have made other queer shows incredibly well some of whom are queer what the fuck happened here this is a I show so made to capitalize off queer misery and torture <clears throat> porn and it is deeply uncomfortable to sit through luckily gmmtv has mostly learned its lesson from that and has made more of an effort in recent years to hire queer directors and writers and actors which is a massive step forward considering that when bl started airing it was common knowledge that you basically couldn't be openly gay to be cast in one. And yet, you were required oh. to tongue your co-star on a regular basis. What? Sometimes not even as your characters, but for That's crazy. It is crazy the things that have to happen, apparently, just so you know that, so that it can get to a better place. Like, like you have to learn sense. from your mistakes, but God freaking damn. My goodness. That's Ocean insane. On reality shows or stage tours. Isn't it? Seems insane, right? Now you're gonna be in this, in this, in this BL, but you can't actually lag boys. What? That's crazy. <laughs> but despite the television love like, diversifying year guess. after year, despite still... Thailand's massive queer underbelly and huge trans population, the government <clears throat> and the culture itself are still incredibly homophobic. So these actors, a lot of whom aren't queer, get into BL because they know it can basically kickstart their careers overnight and guarantee an instant fan base. And mm. then they have to spend however long the show is airing, and before and afterwards, doing fan service with their scene partner in every promotion they do. Hilariously, queer baiting is a massive part of Thai BL. The genre about gay people. And in order to maintain the illusion that these men are dating, they're not really allowed to be openly dating anybody else or having frank discussions about their sexuality. So it's basically written into contracts the exact same way it's written into K pop idols' contracts that they can't date, not just for homophobic reasons, but also out of fear of the legions of fans who get off on shipping the two actors together, having their wow. dreams shattered when it turns out that one or both of them is straight and goes ballistic. The phrase gay for pay gets thrown around That's a lot, crazy. and I get why some people can be bitter about that, but as discussed in my Kit Connor video, it's nobody's business if somebody is queer or not. And they don't need to publicly come out to play a queer character. If they are believably <clears throat> acting in love with another man, why the fuck do you care about their personal life? It's not your business. But BL makes it your business. It's in the marketing, it's in the interviews, it's in the advertisements. Yep, that's messed up. They're not just selling Is a them? show, they're selling a couple. And that makes it very hard <clears throat> to draw distinct, healthy boundaries between fans of the show, fans of the actors, and fans who ship one or both of those things. It's why people reacted so badly when Chris made comments about his own sexuality that, somewhat subjectively, implied that fans oh. asking him if he was gay was offensive to him. Now, 
I'm not going to pretend that I know what's going on in his head, and he absolutely shouldn't have scoffed at the idea like that, especially when he's, you know... Why that response? But, uh, right, he could have just said in a gay no. show, but come. <laughs> that question? First of all, you know, the person who posed the question has all the right to ask the question. Then the person yeah. who, you know, received the question, you don't have to respond to the question. You can just right, ignore the I, I mean, the we've question. been asked that too. Like, are you guys dating each other? Are you guys gay? It's, it's fine. Um, and like in comments. And it's just, it's, it's cute. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's adorable. You know, it shows that like you care, see, that you watch, that you're curious. Why would someone respond with so much anger? <laughs> anger emojis. When honestly, you know, the foundation of the question makes sense. You know, you're in a BL. It's, 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 it's like, are you? No? Okay, cool. <laughs> Have a nice day. Not like oh, that. guys. He was probably bombarded daily with people shipping him with his friend, accusing him of lying for clout, and blowing every tiny thing he did out of proportion. I'm not saying that he's ally of the year, <laughs> but I am saying that calling him outright homophobic <laughs> for that feels like a little bit of a stretch to me. You cannot like Chris, and he did take a break from BL after this, although he's actually going to be in a new one that's coming out early next year again, oh, but the level of that? vitriol <laughs> that comes up whenever his name is mentioned is fucking scary sometimes. I understand why. The connection BL promotion breathes between the stars and the fans is incredibly I guess you could say it's like, oh, he was bombarded, <laughs> he was maybe tired that day or something. Maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. But like, okay. like she said, like probably the level of anger that people get just because of the emoji, like an emoji response, that's like probably years old now. It's like, well, it's also yeah. not okay either to get that angry at it, because he's gonna yeah. be in another BL anyway. So it's not like right. he's not, he's uncomfortable or he's like against anything. <clears throat> yeah, I see that. Not to mention queer audiences haven't really had as much opportunity as straight audiences over decades of entertainment to get yeah. a little bit more normal about those things. So our parasocial attachments tend to be a lot more intense because mm. they used to be so rare for us. Mm, it's why people yeah. glommed onto the Supernatural cast, even though ostensibly mm. <clears throat> two thirds of that cast weren't very receptive to the queer stuff. So comments like that probably felt like a direct betrayal to oh, fans who felt I didn't know that. I love Supernatural. Them. But let's reserve judgment. To I have seen they, like the brothers get shipped. They're brothers. Like, in the show, they're brothers. Like, not stepbrothers. Brothers. <laughs> There's not even, like, a stepbro situation. <laughs> I don't know. I never got that inkling. I think it's just because, like, I'm like that with my brother. Like, we fuck around. Like, just joke Excuse around me? with each other. No. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I get, you gotta clarify. Well, no. it's because I don't know. Nothing in the show gave me an inkling. Like, like, like oh, they're... They're, like they're brothers, like they were like they would just joke around with each other, laugh. They care about each other a lot, you know. You know, like same as like a sibling, any other sibling. So I don't know. I, I never, I never understood. Like I, I never understood that. Okay. Maybe he is homophobic and only going gay for pay, but that's not for us to say until he comes out and says it, and also stops kissing men on TV. He might not be furthering the cause exactly the way we want him to, but he's not standing in the way of it, and if anything, he's part of what opened the door for the more inclusive BLs we're getting today, albeit tangentially. Than Type, a show produced by Me Mind Why and based on a story by Mame, those who know, no, is another example of this really weird dynamic between the audience and the actors. The show itself is <coughs> divisive, and you can like it or not, that's not my business, but you have to admit that the way that Golf and Mew were directed to constantly act like a couple in public started oh. to feel a little exploitative after a while, mm. right? There are 1.2 thousand Mughal fanfics on Wattpad. People wow. have made thousands of videos of every tiny moment caught on camera, dissecting it as proof that they must be a couple. We've seen those <laughs> with like idols too. Yeah. That's always a little... And sure, yeah, they you're might doing be dating, too much. or they might just be the kind of close friends who are physically clingy like that. But either way, say it with me, it's not our fucking business! On the other hand, you have actors like Max Tool, who made their name in Together With Me, a show that is notable for basically normalizing more explicit sex scenes in BL. This which is important because before that they'd all been fairly sterile. Not that that's a bad thing, <laughs> just that it was pretty sterile. one note and they usually only had one closed mouth kiss unless they were water We've already Claw talked about that. No. Max Tool are best friends and they are just naturally very physically affectionate and we know they love doing skinship and fan service. Mike. Oh. 
<laughs> they've worked together as romantic on screen couples in numerous shows and they have bonkers chemistry but we also know they're just platonic friends they've both dated other people in the meantime but that doesn't make their friendship or they're constantly fawning over each other any less real friendship is just as important as romance guys and framing their relationship as somehow lesser just because they're not actually a couple is super weird sure they basically live in each other's assholes but <laughs> Have you ever seen me and my friend Leah in the same room? We're obsessed with each other. People passing us on the street might think we're dating, and that doesn't bother us at all because we're not doing it for them. If actors are comfortable doing fan service, I have absolutely no problem with letting them go hog wild. We should all kiss our homies sometimes as a treat. But my concern <laughs> is that right, I don't bro. always know which one's yeah, act. Yeah, win! Kiss the homie every now and then. He's my homie for real. <laughs> it's funny, like, you would think that we, like, we just do it on camera. No, we flirt off camera too. We flirt so much more off We flirt cameras. with Andy, too. Like, I think it's, it's just the thing. If you're comfortable with your, like, bro, like, at least from our perspective or your friend, you gotta flirt with them a little bit. I don't know. You yeah, know, honestly. Playful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, like, like it's like, super normal. For exactly. me, it's super... For me, it's kind of odd if you don't flirt with your, with your bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, granted, you know, if you just met someone, it's just a friend, you know, you gotta get to that level of... Yeah, it's something you build on because it's, like, that playfulness. But that. once you get to a certain part of the, like a friendship, like, at least for, you know, for me and for my bro and then for Annie and other friends we've had as well, it's just, it's just natural. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, I find it that... odd when, when, they're, when like, people are like, oh, that's weird. That must mean yeah. you're gay. Like, no. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's natural. Just... <laughs> like, oh, like it's... We really don't think anything, like when we say it, we don't think anything of it. It's just us. It's how we, it's how, it's how we flirt. It's how we converse how we with each other. Although, like, if you guys ever were, like, somehow, like, a conversation with Kevin and I just leaked, you guys would think, like, we're straight up dating. <laughs> Every, any conversation outside the camera, I got leaked. Like, you guys would think we're, like, the kinkiest couple ever. But it's just natural. <laughs> it's just, like, the most normal type of shit. I don't know. I don't know. Comfortably comfortable with it all. You know. Because I forgot they're the point actors. we're trying to make. <laughs> and every time the facade <laughs> slips, even we spent way bit, too long on there saying that we a bad day. And... Don't like each other. Like I Bro, swear, they that were... was kind of sus, right? <laughs> 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 like it, lo it looked like we were like, what's it called when it's like when there's a guy that drives a big truck that like you're compensating? No, oh. <laughs> that's a big truck. It looks like we're just tiny things out here. Look, I'm trying to say, you know. No, like you, you overdo it just to like say that you're not. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Although Perfect. honestly, we've we've we haven't. <laughs> honestly, really got, we've actually. We, no, <laughs> we haven't gotten like to to this to this point to the forty minute mark. So good for us. It just shows that we don't need to prove anything. It's just the conversation led to this. Because oh, yeah, now, yeah, you know, we would have started the video with, by the way. But there's no need to, which yeah, no, is like, furthermore I... proves our point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't love as you, affectionate bro. as usual. A mob of furious BL stands rise said, up to scrutinize you, it and then form their own conclusions with basically <laughs> no evidence said. at all. It's concerning. Love you, bro. But for the moment, I'll at least, you, it seems like it's here to stay. Getting back to what I said earlier, three, companies are getting times. better at drawing lines between characters and actors, even if fan service is still a staple of the industry. And they're also making concerted efforts to have stories penned by queer people, directed by queer people, and acted in by queer people. There are still the occasional duds, like Tom Hon Chunlati, which seems to go out of its way to be as subtly homophobic as possible. It stars a bunch of really excellent actors who have played gay characters before and since, but the way it's written stamps the heterosexual romance dogma firmly over their performances. The main relationship is seen as lesser by Tom Tonon's parents, and particularly by his father, because he wants Tan to carry on his bloodline. Never mind that he has another child who can do it for him because she's his daughter, and bloodlines only count if they're misogynistic, damn it! Rather than resolving this storyline by having Tan tell his father that he doesn't want kids, or even that he does, but that it's not relevant right now because he's still a college student and also fuck off, it goes out of its <laughs> way to bend over backwards to appease the misogynistic, homophobic dad. <laughs> Oh no, yeah. like a dad. I'm By sorry, saying that they can just adopt their <laughs> pregnant friend's baby. Go. What? <laughs> there are other dramas that, while popular, haven't quite shaken off the shackles of early yaoi heterosexual tropes, like <sighs> Together. I know admitting that Together isn't really my thing is going to get me murdered, but honestly, I never got it. Their chemistry is fine. I guess? But it's not nearly sizzling enough to make up for the stilted plotline, awkward back and forth flirting, overly heteroified couple dynamics, completely oh. sterile kisses, and some outright homophobia towards Green as a character. Because he's yeah. not an easy to swallow gay person. Oh. He's loud, he's effeminate, he's quirky.
lucky. With the amount of dirty jokes that you know the the, the creator makes, I think we'd be great friends. <laughs> I really do. That's that like, funny. Love it, love it. Shy feels the need to separate Sarawat and Tyne the name's from that Talis, kind of Lauren, gay person. Bro. To assert Talis? that they're better because yeah. they Talis. don't appear Sorry, so Talis. obviously gay. Green is also written to be pretty overbearing and keeps not That's taking no name, for an answer, even when Tyne has said it multiple times. And I'm not saying that those people don't exist, they absolutely do, but I am saying that playing into the predatory gay trope in one of your most popular BLs that is otherwise completely sanitized of queerness or flavor is not a good look. While mm. we're at it, I also don't like Fish Upon the Sky, which is less about the heterosexual tropes than it is about the normalizing of fandom over real people within the show. He repeatedly expresses to Mork that Mork's fan club makes him uncomfortable, the constant scrutiny sets off his anxiety and his self-loathing, and that Mork constantly trying to make their relationship more public is actively damaging his <coughs> mental health. But the show frames this as something for him to overcome with the power <coughs> of his boyfriend ignoring his concerns and pushing him into the public eye Aww. anyway, rather than a toxic relationship with somebody who keeps not hearing him because it doesn't fit his own narrative of their relationship. This how they resolve the conflict? <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, I love Ponfuin and Never Let Me Go is giving me absolute life right now, but I am so glad Fish Upon the Sky isn't the only thing we have of theirs anymore because mm. it's a really bad romance that could have been great if they just tweaked it a bit more and made the fan clubification of real people's relationships out to be as weird as it actually is. But for the oh. most part, since 2020, Thai BLs have moved forward in leaps and bounds. We're portraying interesting Where? relationships, unhealthy relationships in a critical way rather Where? than just endorsing them. We're no longer constantly applying heterosexual standards to gay relationships, and we're slowly inching away from that seemingly innocent capable trope where one half of the couple is always more reluctant to do anything physical than another. This one is slightly different ah. because the fact oh. that they kiss it sort of reveals so their relationship like, oh. to their two friends who it's didn't know that they were dating. I mainly included this one for this shot because of this random girl turning around like, to react the right in shock. This is so funny to me. Slowly inching away from that seemingly ready. inescapable right trope where one half of the couple right, is always okay, more reluctant now. to do anything physical than I'm another. Still not ready, this one is slightly different because the fact that they kiss it sort of reveals their relationship to their two friends who didn't know that they were dating. I mainly included this one for this shot because of this random girl turning around to react in shock. This is so funny to me. <laughs> really weird how prevalent that trope has been. Like leftovers from the non-con days where it's not quite actual non-con, but it's uncomfy. Why would I want to watch a couple where one of them is constantly shoving the other one away? It's giving married couple on an 80s sitcom and oh. <laughs> nobody wants to be one of those. Luckily, we're actually starting to leave those tropes in the dust as the industry expands and the show's plots and characters get more varied. We've moved out of high school and university and are doing thriller crime dramas, Groundhog Day style hospital dramas, and horny mafia spectaculars. Kids. Port. And it's glorious. <laughs> so without further ado, here are my top 10, or slightly more, Thai BL Rex. Actually, somewhat in order. Special mentions okay. go to Cutie Pie, Why Are You, Two Moons 2, and Star and Sky for being the fluffiest fun shows to watch when I need something Fluffy. easy, but which don't quite have enough substance to make the list. There mm. are also probably like five more shows that the moment I stop recording this, I'm going to remember. I thought Bad Buddy was fluffy too until they pulled out a gun. That's when it all <laughs> changed for me. It was fluffy no more. His innocence was loud. And then I'm gonna cry about it. It's fine. We're Put all doing fine here. Glass. Number 10. Love in the air and secret crush on you. I'm lumping these together because I can't help. I can't actually cut it down to 10. I can't do it. And also because they're both horny Best and chaotic. Cheating. Love in the air is divided in half. The first half is about a man with half a brain cell falling for a biker bisexual who is already smitten by him. Did somebody say more is sexual? That is a common kind of sexuality in Thai dramas and I love it. And the second half is a really touching story about someone recovering from past abuse with a guy who used to be a playboy until he met him. They had me in the first half with the dumb shit and then KO'd me with the emotional arcs. Similarly to Secret Crush on You, which I initially thought I was going to hate. It's about a guy who's obsessed with the hot guy on campus to the point where he's basically pseudo-stalking him and collects stuff he's touched. It's weird. But what makes it work is That's that the weird. guy he's obsessed with absolutely loves that Toe is a little freak. I don't know what more sexual is for little weird guys, little but Noah's got it. Yeah, the music's got it on. He loves writhing top. There's some dumb hijinks throughout, but as with Love in the Air, it gets surprisingly earnest towards the end, and you don't realize how much you love all of these characters until you're crying over the trans character's love interest, telling her he doesn't need her to be anybody but herself because Ooh, he no. likes her as she is. Oh. 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 
<laughs> nine, not me. No, Do you want shows about queer revolution, fighting the power, and dismantling violent and oppressive political and capitalist structures using protest, arson, and graffiti? Then this is the show for you. Wyatt lives it? a life of relative luxury, but when his twin brother Black is nearly beaten to death, he can feel it and decides to take Black's identity and infiltrate the gang he was a part of to figure out which oh. one of them did it. He ends up agreeing with their cause <laughs> and helping them on missions, all while falling in love with Sean, someone who had previously really just liked Black. Excellent work on all sides, and in my opinion, off Gun's best performances. Wow. Number eight. I told mm. something about you. Do that you like hard. crying? Me too. Go watch the show. It's just so emotional. Two kids in love, repressed, giving not only the their personal gay feelings win? for each other, but also their rivalry, their friendship, their families, their environments. It's so upsetting and it's everything to me. Also, go listen to Peepy music. The man owns all the gender. <laughs> Oh. Number seven, Whoa. Kin Porsche. Speaking of a man who owns all the gender, Jeff Satura's in this. <laughs> Kin Porsche is also one of the horniest things I've Kim ever Porsche. seen, and I loved every oh. deranged second of it. Kin, a mafia boss, hires Porsche to be his bodyguard, and things escalate from there. Kin's older brother, Tan Kin, is incredibly fabulous and queer. His younger brother is played <laughs> by Jeff Satur, enough said. And the maid side couple is a weird dom sub torturer and torturee dynamic that I thought I would. Should we, like, fast forward this? <laughs> I don't think she hasn't spoiled that much. Okay, that. okay, okay. Because this one might be one, guys. If you want to check out Kim Porsche, make sure you check out Patreon because we might already be checking out there before it hits YouTube. Maybe if it wins. Would hate, but ended up really enjoying. <laughs> But oh my god, definitely check the trigger warnings on this one before you watch it. It is a mafia show after all. Number six, Tale of Thousand Stars. Not the last back off no panache directed entry on this list. Foreshadowing is a literary device in which- This is about somebody who gets a heart transplant and then goes to the village where the girl he got in the heart from had worked when she was alive. He ends up falling for the range there. And part of what makes this show so fantastic is how undeniably queer it is. There's none of that I'm not gay, I just like you energy. There's just two people falling for each other and knowing it, and it's absolutely brilliant. Piof has an amazing talent for creating creating queer stories that really feel real. Oh, because as a queer man himself, he always surrounds himself with other queer members of the crew and goes out of his way to cast actors that are already friends who are comfortable enough with each other that their chemistry is undeniable. Since the show, mm. Earthmix have basically been inseparable as a pairing and it's crazy how often Piof is able to cast so well. Even when he's given mm. the keys to existing kingdoms, like still together, oh. he manages to elevate them beyond what they started with. Number five, Kiss Me Again and Dark Blue Kiss. Speaking of off giving keys to kingdoms, he directed the second season of Kiss Me Again, Dark Blue Kiss. Both of these seasons are are great for different reasons, <clears> but <throat> if, like me, you just love Pete and Cal's dynamic and enjoy seeing Tainu on screen, both of them are worth the watch. Some people swear by the first season <clears> being better, some people swear by the second. I think they both have their merits. In terms of queer representation, Dark Blue Kiss takes it, because Piof is a genius and we should all bow down before him. <laughs> 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 But in terms of showing the beginning of their relationship and oh. the way it evolves from oh. enemies to friends to lovers, Kiss Me Again has half the BLs in the country. God damn. Number four. Triage. Triage is a Groundhog Day style Triage. time loop story set in the ER of a hospital where Tin loses <coughs> a patient and then gets stuck in a loop, only to be told he can oh. only escape the loop if he saves said patient. Oh. This requires him trying to stop the events which caused him to end up in the hospital, which also means oh. he meets him a bunch of times and slowly ends up falling for the abrasive, seemingly unlikable at first tall. I'm a slut for a good time loop. Watch what this space for a video plot. I have on those. I applaud that. Really and this cool, yeah. that plot is freaking insane. I applaud that so much. Also, we love two bi protagonists. Absolutely iconic. Number three, until we meet again and between us. Do you want to cry? Fucking strap in, because this show will make you do Kevin it. Kevin Strap. Until we meet again, and the currently airing sequel about the side couple between us, which is also excellent, is just phenomenal. A couple that died together because the world wasn't ready to accept <clears> them for who they were get reincarnated into two people who, when they meet, start having flashbacks of memories that aren't their own. Ooh. The juxtaposition of the two wow. love stories in tandem, the way they would fall in love with each other no matter when or where they are, the emotional resonance of certain parallels to scenes that I refuse to talk <coughs> about because I will cry. It's just an exceptional piece of media and I can't recommend it highly enough.
Number two, Love by Chance. Come on, you knew this had to be on the list. Love by Chance is one of the sweetest love stories I have ever seen, and it launched the careers of two of the best actors in the industry right now, Saint and Perth. Putting all of the messy management stuff from behind the scenes aside, <coughs> this show is oh. truly exceptional, oh. and shows what an impact a quiet, earnest love story can have on audiences around the what world. What happened? Pete are just so awesome, Ryan, and I'm as a queer person who knows exactly how it feels to realize your feelings aren't entirely platonic for somebody who might not take it well, it really spoke to me on a spiritual level. Also, I love a healthy dose of hurt comfort, and this show Delivered that to me in spades. Oh. <clears throat> Taking a tap up. And my number one pick, the light of my life, my raison d'etre. <laughs> number one, Bad Buddy. Hey! Is anybody surprised? <laughs> Listen, this show fundamentally changed me as a person. Anybody who's friends with me knows exactly how much I could not shut up about this the entire time it was airing. Hell, we had a fun PowerPoint night and my PowerPoint was why this show is the greatest queer romance of all time. PowerPoint. So allow me to give you an abridged version of that PowerPoint now. Once again, Pete offers out <laughs> one true savior and he cast two people who were already well known to be best friends. So the chemistry wow. was baked in before they even started. Pat, played by Orm, and Pran, played by Nanon, have lived next door to each other their entire lives, but their parents hate each other. We don't get a spoil. We got like one episode left. And personal. <laughs> it's giving modern Romeo and Juliet, but with the comedic stylings of much <clears> about <throat> nothing, particularly in the way Pat Pran talk to each other. Very Beatrice and Benedict, which is very sexy of them, to be honest. Beatrice and Benedict. Uh, Honestly, Pran a little naughty. You know what I'm saying out here? Pran gives hints that he 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 knows his ways. <laughs> In high school, they became secret friends, and Pran's mother found out and was so furious she made him transfer schools and quit guitar. They haven't seen each other for three years when they realize they're at the same uni in rival faculties. Engineering, Pat versus architecture. Pran. Their friends hate each other. Their families oh hate my each other. God. I don't remember seeing that. Do you? Do the white cord. Are you talking about the white cord fight? No, like the one where he like just like folded into the thing. It's right, the, yes. Oh, dude, everything about that scene, my bro. Oh my. I don't remember God. seeing that. Oh, dude, I could rewatch that every morning just to wake up. It was so freaking funny. It is the funniest thing ever. Once they just can't help but get along. And maybe there are some other feelings underneath. Because as it turns out, Pran has been in love with Pat since high school. He never explicitly says this, except in his eyes, in every single scene. Yeah, and also in the love song he wrote back like in high school that he played with Pat for the Christmas event, I would just which stop was the way his mother found out. Right, like, and he's this still in going. love with him now. At this point, Pat thinks he still has a thing for their friend Ink, and his sister gives him some signs to look to see if she likes Damn. him. Then, he sees Pran in the music <laughs> shop, and... <laughs> I don't know if someone likes you. <clears throat> These motherfuckers dedicated an entire episode to Pran's italicized O oh moment. And it was only episode four. Five! This is important because it led to the moment that broke the entire BL industry. I don't really? want to tell you much more than this because I think you should just watch this show, Thank but I would like to talk about the fact that Piaf explicitly uses the product placement for good. Anybody who watches Asian shows will tell you that most of them shoehorn product placement in there so overtly it's like getting bonked over the head with it. Like pausing the narrative to espouse the virtues of a drink or brand for a full minute over it. I held a printer for a whole episode, make sure you all check it out. <laughs> And while that's the standard in countries like Korea and Thailand, it can feel really jarring to Western audiences who have been rallying against product placement for years. Back off as a director is so embarrassed about doing product placement product that he placement? does- Hell no. no! What? I'm about to star jar against that. <laughs> against the jars. <laughs> what? Seems about to break that jar. Oh, I, don't, I mean, why? I don't know. I don't really mind it. It's not that bad. I'd rather keep Dude. watching it than have like five minutes worth of commercials like they do here. It allows the budgets to be higher and and everything we've watched from dramas to anything. The product placements has always been so funny to the scene to me. Yeah, it's so make sure you guys also addition. eat your Reese's cup. <laughs> yeah, Use our code. 
<laughs> no, bro. Guys, look at that. Look how Kevin looks sexier today with that sweater. Link will be oh. below so you can get your own with the blood and the blur lines. All right. This is level best. Fully work them into the plot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, bro, and they were wiping each other's faces. <laughs> <laughs> well, like how sugar, you know, products is placement. Placement in bad is buddy, product. This results in them like, being used for positive gift. reasons, like strengthening <laughs> their relationship, and most commonly for horny reasons. <laughs> this show breaks basically everybody. Oh, wow. This results in them being used for positive reasons, like strengthening their relationship, and most commonly for horny reasons. Wake up this show breaks basically <laughs> every negative yaoi convention, looking those terrible tropes directly in the face as they flip them off and do wheelies on their corpses. There is a Willow Assign couple. Wheelies. Okay, we're dangerously close to the episode we're in right now. <laughs> There's supportive straight friends. <laughs> There's an actual mm. conversation about how inaccurate yeah, the whole top bottom husband Car. wife stereotype is. Oh, yo! Good thing we watched it before a while. <laughs> right? Oh my god. <laughs> and there's no non con in sight. That seems like a low bar, but I have watched over 200 of these, and let me tell you that far more than 10% of them do not achieve it. When I say Bad Buddy is revolutionary, I mean it unironically. Piaf be out here really revolutionizing the BL industry and truly making it queer. And he's not the only one. There are trans directors like Anucha Bunyawatana, who made Not Me, a show explicitly about revolution under oppressive power structures, and Golf Tamarin, who made The Eclipse after being shadily ousted as a politician for unjust reasons and wanted to use her platform to rally against queer phobia and corrupt politicians she and the way that oppressive power structures affect the people living in them. And openly gay creators yeah, like Jojo Chichikorn, who explicitly got into the industry because he felt that gay characters were typically either represented as sassy, tragic figures, or as cute schoolboy couples, and wanted to explain expand that into more diverse queer representation. Their characters actually have sexual desires like real people without reducing them to just that, and they can be gay, bi, pan, <clears throat> trans, non-binary, or anything in between. They're a bit slow on the ace uptake, but we can forgive them for that. There are more and more writers and directors like this emerging every year, and they're really setting the example not just for Thai BL, but for the world on how to make compelling, accurate queer content without always watering it down to sterility or over-sexualizing it to the point of fetishization. So the industry she might have some issues and we've still got a ways to go but we're still going and we're getting louder every year you don't have to like every show i've recommended but i do suggest going away and watching at least one the queer community isn't just Whoa, one bad, thing buddy. so if you find one show isn't accurate to your experience there will be another show out there that is western media should learn a thing or two from bl because unless it's heartstopper or helmed by ryan murphy whose works feel homophobic even though he's a queer man everything queer we make hmm. gets panned or cancelled <clears throat> Netflix, I am looking directly at you with a gun. Stop cancelling women-led queer shows. While Netflix is doing that, Thailand and the Philippines and Korea are greenlighting more GLs than ever before, and they're reaping all the rewards. Even if you're a corporation that only cares about money, cough, Disney, cough, you can't deny the cold hard fact that BL and GL and QL are becoming a multi-million dollar industry, and you'd be stupid not to get in on that, no matter how bigoted you're pretending not to be. BL isn't just yai anymore, it's queer storytelling and anybody who disagrees is telling on themselves welcome to the rabbit hole Alice we're all queer down here but isn't that only because like the like those companies were able to become lucrative and they started making money that they started making more like here I don't case... know if it's like the culture or the people here or I, I'm thinking it's the content yeah, in of itself yeah. right like the content from like that they're making in like in in the in Asian countries it's actually entertaining and people gravitate towards it. Here, it's just kind of like, it seems like it was a money grab or it's like, or trying to be, you know, it's like, oh, look, we have, you know, we're, we're progressive. But then like the actual show or, or movie, they just weren't that good. So then it always bombs, like financially. I don't, I don't know, know how why, that works. You know, you can, you can like feel, feel when something, <clears throat> as you said, like if, if, they don't really care much about, yeah. you know, the audience or like the content they're making, but just about the money that's in that market to or be made. Or if it looks when good. When you can feel that difference, when there's a companies that actually, you know, that people are there that do want to represent 
and you know make this make progress it even more show. yeah and it's different it feels different it's not just for the so, sake yeah. <clears throat> of it being queer it's that's right just so you can hit to that market story. that we're now hitting yeah mm-hmm. Here in the West, they don't seem to be able to do that. Where it's like they make it a good show. It's people so transparent watch. that it's for the money. Yeah. You know? Or I, not even <clears throat> not just for the money. It's to just to make themselves look good. Like, oh look, we we have this and we have that. Look, look, look. We're good people, kind of thing. But it just seems forced. It doesn't mm-hmm. even seem like you actually mm-hmm. want to mm-hmm. put, like you said, <clears throat> actual representation, entertainment That's representation, right. or like. That's right. You know, there was so much I wanted I, I to think cover that's why I think it's bombed here. so I left it out, so I'm gonna do like a little speed run here. Everybody should play Staircase Bingo with that one dangerous looking staircase that keeps showing up in like <laughs> every drama. Seriously, there's a running list, it's so many. Uh, bizarre sound Uh-oh. effects. This is especially prevalent in Thai BLs, but it appears in Japanese, Filipino, and Vietnamese ones as well. The strangest choices for me are the stereotypical horny music in Vietnam every time they so much as kiss. <laughs> and the mind-boggling and attention-grabbing sound effects of some Thai BLs. <laughs> uh, terrible audio. So Seriously, hoarse. among Thai BL fans, it has become a meme how oh, bad the audio that's so is. True. There's constant mic rustling. The audio mixing is frequently a mess, <clears throat> especially with all those sound effects thrown in. And it's just so bad. We love to see it, or rather, <laughs> not hear it properly. And yet, despite the horrendous audio, Thailand has some of the best OSTs <clears throat> of all time. Kin Porsche's theme absolutely slays. Oh. I'm so down for Kin Porsche's is Big Dragon's theme It didn't deter me that much. <laughs> Every song on the Bad Buddy the soundtrack so messy, outdoes you know? the last. And Tilly's songs keep getting used in trailers and ruining my life because I can't stop listening to them. <clears throat> it's not just Thailand either. The K drum ones are good. <laughs> and the Japanese ones slap. Oh. Oh. And this is UMG, like Universal Musical? Industry. Absolutely iconic <laughs> behavior. Please never stop going way too hard in all your OSTs. But more than anything else, I just wanted to talk about how much of an impact this show has had on me in terms of like expressing myself and my queer identity. Like I've Aww. always been very outspokenly queer basically since I moved back to the UK and, and, and properly came out. This show has made me start dressing more how I want to dress. Start, start talking about queer stuff more openly with people. It's helped me make friends. Hi Ella. And hi all my Tumblr friends also. <laughs> it's just improved my quality of life in a way that I'm not sure everybody who isn't queer will get. But I do think that a lot of non-queer people will get it. Because so many people feel othered by society, whether it's because they're queer or a person of colour or disabled or any number of other things, whether you're neurodivergent, autistic, have ADHD, there is always something that can make you feel excluded. And shows like this that have the excluded characters as the protagonists of the narrative and not in some pre-written, oh, he's just a bit different, Jughead, I'm weird way. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird. But in a tangible <laughs> way that you can feel, <laughs> that you know real society would not interact well with this person. It really affects how deeply you care for these characters. Yeah. Like, I understand where the line, I'm not gay, I just like you comes from, much as it's fucking stupid. Learn what bisexuality is, it's not I'm hard! Not gay, but just I kind of bro. get somebody <laughs> actually saying that in real life because. It's really scary to label yourself as gay. It's really scary to look at yourself in the mirror and admit Mm. that you aren't quote-unquote normal. And much as those shows I don't think did a great job of normalizing it, they did do a good job of opening the door to normalizing it. And that's fantastic. I think Sinto is going to go really far in his career. I think Max and Tull are brilliant. There are so many shows that I didn't get to mention because I just didn't have time. The the Eclipse is really good. That's also really political. Damn, and this this is a long video. (laughs) 
I mean, that, that's honestly the There's so much commentary being made shows. on you know? how different queer people react. And there are bad queer characters in these shows that are written to be not good people in a way that is believable and doesn't feel like it's just villainizing queer people because half the show is queer. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the saying, like, you can't have bury your gaze if half the cast is gay because then it's just a character dying. It's the same thing. Like, you can't be villainizing all queer people if your show is made up almost entirely of queer people. And that's great. It means that when we do have queer villains, they are fleshed out, interesting characters that you actually want to understand more. To me, this feels like a massive step <coughs> forward in queer representation in society, and I, I need the West to embrace it n yesterday. I need, I need all of my friends and also everybody else to just come over here and just hug, hug all of the BLs in, in Asia for me. Because like, oh my god, they're everything to me. They have improved my quality of life so much. Like, this, I, don't, I wouldn't have made it through this year without, without <coughs> all the BLs I was watching. I really wouldn't. I, it's, it's been rough. And, and if nobody else has got me, I know my Nivea product placement has got me. Am I right, lads? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I really wanted to say. I don't really have an outro. I know that the moment I stop recording, I'm going to think of like a hundred other things I wanted to say. So maybe I might make a sequel to this video at some point in the future. Maybe reflecting on some of the things I said here or expanding on the list of things, shows that I think are great. But in the meantime, if you want me to do more thorough deep dives on any particular one of these shows or genres of these shows or countries, like please let me know. I love talking about this stuff. I love doing the research for this. I spent so long writing this, this script. It was great. <coughs> please comment. Please let me know. Feel free to like and subscribe. I'm um, slowly growing this channel crazily. Like that wasn't Slay. my intention when I when I started make, making videos again a few months ago. But, like, it's subscribe. really nice to see so many of you. Try. It makes me really emotional. Shout out to all of the Tumblr people that I reached out to. Um, Tallies, to the their introvert. Were, <clears> and <throat> chatted to about this. Like you guys are all great. I'm so glad that like I have you to talk to about this sort of thing and that you got equally as excited Aww. as I was when I talked about writing this essay. Even if you're not sure, if, <clears> like you know, BL or QL will be your thing. Try it out. You know, if if you if you like the sound of any of these plots, try it out. A lot of it's on YouTube. The stuff, the, some of it's on Netflix. If you have a Vicky subscription, you can get it that way. There are not so legal ways of watching it, but I don't recommend <laughs> those. I, I don't. But so much of it's on YouTube, especially Tybl. There's don't so many Tybls on YouTube. What but if you do. Join a community in Tumblr because but it is there. a community. <laughs> and some people in the it links in the description. As with all communities on the internet <laughs> and the web, you can just block them. It's really easy. So yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for sitting through however long this video ended up being. Thank you for um, in me as I talk about one of my insane hyperfixations, and thank you to the BL industry for saving my life, and also specifically Aww. to Piaf for saving the BL industry. <laughs> I'm Aww. off to go watch some more gay shit. And young. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> what a way of ending the video! A shout out to Talis, thank you for Liz. teaching us oh so gosh. much about the BL tropes and the BL world. And then shout out obviously to Elizabeth for suggesting this. And Elizabeth Sarabello on Patreon. Thank you for supporting. This was honestly really cool. We got to talk Talis, about a lot of things it, too. Let us know what you guys think. If you're watching right now, Talis, somehow, you know, first of all, amazing video. I can feel your passion, you know, and just wanting to portray this to like a bigger and broader audience. And the way you said, you know, just, just, just the way that it was said here is that this this type of content is now being more normalized and you know i'm assuming with the with it being just more normalized and therefore it's hitting you know, new audiences too like to the people that are hating on this or there's haters just don't watch it you know because it, it's sad it really is sad yeah. that there, there will be hate and all that for for this type of content just don't watch it you know just don't be a hater because this type of content is now with with more creative people and there's more budget for all this as well it allows people who don't feel represented who feel alone to have something to relate to and yep. that's awesome and then actually way, being a good show like it actually being entertaining actually, content yes, being a like, good that's, show that's just awesome you know shout out to uh, thank you again for watching i just hit video. my glasses see you guys next time peace ciao <laughs>